Yo, what's going on? Welcome back to a video that I didn't think I was going to have to make. Um, you might have seen recently, I've uploaded on Instagram that one of my Pretorias is buckled. Um, they're, they're known for being quite weak. Um, I thought I was going to escape having this issue, but apparently not. Um, so uh, I'm going to have to go get it straightened. I found a place uh, in Telford. Um, not too far away from me that does wheel straightening and um, I need to go get it done because I really didn't want it to happen because I, I thought it would thought I'd be able to escape um, but apparently the winter that's just gone around Shrewsbury uh, the roads were awful and one's gone one's it's front left or in the UK that's the side of the car that gets the most damage because it's the side near all the salt or the pothole or the manhole covers they're all over on that side of the road for us for the most part and that's how it gets you know, all the damage so that's kind of uh, something I didn't want to have to do um, but I thought I'd use this as an opportunity to kind of do um, a video that I've kind of wanted to do for a while and it's showing working on my car and so when I first bought the car I didn't really know too much about this generation of golf um, so things like jacking points um, how to take the wheels off and um, what to check for all that kind of stuff I didn't know until I tried stuff out for myself and wrote stuff online. So I thought I'd do a quick video, um, put stuff into one helpful place, kind of log what I've done with the car. And yeah, I'm just gonna use this as like a little experiment. So I'm gonna switch to my GoPro. Um, just got a little little mic sticking out the side of it. Hopefully the wind noise isn't too bad with the um, cover over the mic, um, should be fine. Uh, but I'm gonna show you where the jacking points are and how to get it up in the air properly um, or at least as safe as possible given the tools you've got I'll also show you what you need and yeah it should be an interesting little video so I don't think there'll be too much of me talking to the camera this time I'm actually going to show you something interesting rather than just me talking um, so without further ado let's get into that to get started what you really need is the stuff over here hopefully my shadow is not going to ruin everything okay so these are the tools you're going to need um, I've got a jack uh, a bar to fit the socket on the cap puller so you can get the um, wheel nut covers off and your locking wheel nut key first thing you want to do you want to go around the wheel with this basically you put it in like this and pull it off and then there you go done nice and simple so yeah once you've got all of those out um, they're just put them somewhere safe you don't want to lose them little top tip uh, one of them if I can get it in the sunlight, looks different on the inside to the others, which is the one that goes over the locking wheel nut. You'll be surprised how many people don't know that. Um, so yeah, keep that safe. It's gonna be very windy today, so I'm gonna pop them in the boot of the car so I don't lose them. You then wanna go and find the jacking point, which is under the car on the sill. There's another bit, I think it's about here. Yeah, this part here. You can see it gets extra thick here. So this part is the pit that you want to put the jack onto. So you want to get down and have a look properly, but I've done this enough time to know that it's there. See that you've got your jack in the right place. Double check. Slowly start pumping it up. You'll see it will take some of the pressure off the suspension. As the car starts to raise, you want to double check again. I know it's safe enough to put the car up. And just keep on pumping until the car is off the ground. So once you've got them all slackened off, it's easy enough to just undo them with your finger. You can do the locking wheel nut with the locking wheel nut key. Then you just take the socket off and undo all the bolts. This way you can be very careful when you're pulling them out, you don't scratch your wheels. The wheel will come off nice and easily. I'm not gonna be able to do it with the camera, so I'm gonna have to put the camera down. Um, so I'll show you once the wheel's off. Usually you'd wanna have a jack stand to put underneath the car, just in case. I know this, um, jack's going to be good enough to hold the car up for the period of time it's going to need um, because I've got the spare wheel to go on 
as this car is going to get this wheel fixed. Okay, so once you've pulled the wheel off, you'll have it. You'll notice um, just here that there is a flat spot on the rim. The plan is to get this pushed back out. The company that are doing it say it's going to take, they're going to need the wheel for about three days just to push this back out. As there is a round here that it gets, it's round all the way at the front of the face of the wheel, but the damage is at the back or side of the wheel across here. So they just need to push this out and it's quite a difficult process, but I'm sure they know what they're doing. They are the professionals, so that's why it's going there. And you'll notice it's propped up on its space saver. Okay, so this is basically the inside of the front left of the Golf R. Um, as you can see, everything looks as it should. It's always good to have a little check while your uh, wheels are off because you never know what you might find. Um, but for me, everything looks looks fine. I live in Shropshire, so it's never going to be clean. But yeah, so next step for me is to put the space saver wheel on and go and get the other one fixed. I'm going to do the same the other side, but it's the same process for each wheel. Um, but yeah, if you're going to take, if it's going to be off for much longer than this amount of time for about five, 10 minutes, you're going to want a jack stand up. There's a good place underneath the middle of the car, or if you can get one to go underneath on this point here as well, perfect. But yeah, I'm going to put the other wheel on and then get back to you. Okay, so when you're putting the, the other wheel back on, this one looks a bit stupid, I know, um, but it's a similar process. What I always do is I make sure it's flush on the uh, hub, then I always put one bolt and then two bolts opposite each other, and that helps to push the wheel in so you know it's centered. And then you can start with your fingers, just run the other bolts in. Okay, so back in the car, I uh, just wanted to have a recap of what just what I've just done. Uh, hopefully the GoPro's recorded all that, because if it hasn't, that was a waste of time. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my way of taking a wheel off and checking everything. Um, it's relatively safe. I would would say take what I've done with a grain of salt, obviously. Uh, some of the things I've done might be wrong. I'm not a mechanic. I'm not a professional. Um, I just learn bits and bobs by trying stuff myself. Um, so if you don't feel like you're confident enough to do what I've just done, could always take it to a mechanic but it is quite a simple and easy job um you could do it at home to be fair you could use these standard jack in the back of the car um and the little tools that they give you to do the same thing um it's just going to be a bit longer winded process and the stuff they give you in the boot of the car is pretty much emergency only use it doesn't it's not the greatest stuff in the world um but it does work if you need it to i need some tires i mentioned this in my last video i need tires um, I'm going to show you what my Continentals look like after I think I've done 12,097 miles so far on my Golf R, um, which isn't a huge amount. It's quite good for soft compound tyres, but so yeah, it's not too bad for uh, soft compound tyres, but it's not the best. Um, so I am interested to know what you guys have got still. So yeah, drop a comment down below. Um, but I'm going to do a review about tyres and showcase what has actually happened to my Continental um, while I've got the wheel off because. It looks awful. I don't know what has happened to it, and I don't know whether it was overinflated, underinflated, or why the tire wear is like that. I'm gonna have a look at it and find out. I'll be in an upcoming video, but a little bit confused as to why it's only why the fronts have shredded after 12,000 miles. When uh, I'm on all the on the forums, I've been reading people get 15-ish out of set of Continentals. I don't particularly drive my car that hard all the time. Like it's just just seemed to have disappeared. So yeah, tyres are next, get the wheel straightened, um, and that's some upcoming videos for you, so make sure you subscribe because I'm going to make them more interesting than rather than just me talking at you, sitting in the car. Um, so yeah, appreciate the uh, support, thanks for watching, and if you could subscribe and follow me on Instagram, put the handle here, as for always, I'll see you in the next one.